That is the plan for the church. His plan is to bring us to the place where we are a glorious church, filled with the glory of God. We're going to walk the earth that way before we leave. Filled with the glory of God, manifested sons of God. It is God's will for you to live in peace and joy. No matter what the enemy may try to do to your family, God has provided the protection they need. Learn more on today's Believer's Voice of Victory with Gloria Copeland and her special guest, Billy Brim. Hello, everybody. Welcome to the Believer's Voice of Victory. Billy Brim from Prayer Mountain in the Ozarks is here, and we're talking about the authority of the believer. You and I... We've got authority in the name of Jesus. Hallelujah. Welcome, Billy. I remember when we found out about it, and we found out. We needed it. Yes, we found out about it through Brother Kenneth E. Hagin. That's right. And then later I went on to Brother Hagin to work for him, and uh, I did the uh, the printing of the books and everything came under my authority. And this book sold more than any other book we had. It's Brother Hagin's The Believer's Authority. And we had that book uh, printed in um, Russian and took it into the Soviet Union. Wow. And I'm telling you, it had something to do with the downfall of the Soviet Union. So um, Brother Hagen writes in his foreword, Back in the 1940s, I asked myself the question, do we have authority that we don't know about, that we haven't discovered, that we're not using? I'd had a little glimpse of spiritual authority once in a while. Like others, I'd stumbled upon it and had exercised it without knowing what I was doing. I wondered, is the Spirit of God trying to show me something? So I began to study along this line, think along this line, feed along this line, and I began to see more and more light. An article in the Pentecostal Evangel prompted my study on the words power and authority. Then I came across a wonderful pamphlet entitled The Authority of the Believer by John A. McMillan, a missionary to China, and... um, As a result of my studies, I concluded that we as a church have authority on the earth we've never yet realized, authority we're not using. A few of us have barely gotten to the edge of that authority, but before Jesus comes, that's now, there's going to be a whole company of believers who will rise up with the authority that that is theirs. They will know what is theirs, and they will do the work that God intended they should do. So that's what's all this about. We're talking about the attacks of the enemy that are increasing. And the pamphlets that Brother Hagen read uh, by that missionary, John McMillan, have been put into a book. And so uh, I'm going to read you now from John McMillan's preface. See if it sounds like today. The rapidly approaching end of the age is witnessing a tremendous increase in the, ac- in the activity of the powers of darkness. Unrest among the nations, more intense than at any previous time in Earth's history. Now, he died in 1956. So I don't know what he'd think if he could see how it is now. He talked about secularized uh, education. Hmm. Uh, He talked about godlessness in our society and other things that I won't take time to mention. But he talks about them. We all know about them. To meet the situation, he writes... The church of Christ needs a new conception of prayer. The urgent call is for men and women wholly yielded to the Lord whose eyes have been enlightened to see their ministry in the heavenlies. Now think about that. You have a ministry in the heavenlies. I have a ministry in the heavenlies. What does it mean? The urgent call is for men and women wholly yielded to the Lord, whose eyes have been enlightened to see the ministry in the heavenlies to which they've been called. Such believers may, in union with the great head of the church, exercise an authority to which the powers of the air must give place wherever challenged. Mm -hmm. So we have a ministry in the heavenlies. You might have a ministry on earth, Certainly, there's Kenneth Copeland Ministries. We have uh, a uh, prayer mountain in the Ozarks. So we have ministries on earth. But I'm telling you to run those ministries on earth. 
and to keep the devil from trying to wipe you out, you need to know your ministry in the heavenlies That's right. so that you can rule and reign over him. The Authority of the Believer by Macmillan, he writes, there are a few subjects relating to the Christian life concerning which there's so little knowledge as that of the authority of the believer. This is not because such authority is the property of only a few select souls. On the contrary, it is the procession of every true child Praise of God. God. That's right. It is one of the all things received in Christ. Its reception dates from the soul's contact with Calvary. The day you got born again, I was either seven or eight years old. I got authority. I didn't know a thing in the world about it. Mm -hmm. But I got authority over the devil. I was doing a book for Lester Sumrall, and you know he had such authority over demons. I knew it and exercised it. When I was working with him on a book one day, I was sitting at his desk. Telephone call came in. It was a really difficult case, um, anorexia or something like that. And uh, when, when he put the phone down, he turned to me and said, if they'd only known it, a child could have done what I just did if they knew it. Because it comes to you when you're born again, right. the authority of the believer. Now, the first thing that Macmillan does and, and Brother Hagin does in his book is, is differentiate between uh, what the King James translates. The King James uses about five or six words uh, and, 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 and puts power for every one of them. But they have different meanings in the Greek. One of those Greek words is exousia, and it means authority. King James usually translates it power. Uh, there's another one, dunamis, and that's like the dynamo, dynamic power, booing power. So um, the power that we're given, the authority that we're given in the Lord Jesus Christ uh, over the enemy is the uh, authority, the, author the exousia power. And it's demonstrated like this uh, by both of these writers. If, if a policeman, if there's a big heavy traffic, and a policeman stands in the road, and here come semi-trucks or whatever. He's in a uniform. He raises his hand, he or she. They stop. He does not have the dunamis to hold them back. The, yeah. But he has got the exousia. He the has authority. got the authority. That's right. And the authority uh, uh, is backed by the power behind it. If he's a NYPD, New mm -hmm. York Police Department, well, then he can stop those semis because the power of NYPD is behind him. The power of the throne of God uh, is behind us when we oh, lift yeah. our hand to yeah. the enemy and we say thus far and no further. Now, we've been reading in our Bibles about the plan of God, and particularly we're going to look today at the book of Ephesians. That is the plan for the church. His plan is to bring us to the place where we are a glorious church filled with the glory of God. We're going to walk the earth that way before we leave, filled with the glory of God, manifested sons of God. Now, it says here in Ephesians that his plan for us is um, Ephesians 5, middle of verse 25, Christ also loved the church and gave himself for her, that he might sanctify and cleanse her with the washing of water by the word, that he might present her to himself a glorious church, filled with the glory of God. Now, that's God's plan. Remember we studied God's plan, man was crowned with the glory, fell from the glory, but the Lord of glory came back and he's Christ in us, the hope of glory. We're going to come into the fullness of glory. Satan doesn't like that plan. No, he doesn't. Finishes him so off. So it finishes him off. So you're going to see down here that the church is going to have to do something about him. Now, um, we don't have to defeat him like Jesus did. He defeated him. The Bible says he made a show of him openly, triumphing over him in it. But he's still on the loose, and he's going to be on the loose until Adam's, until the time comes, until Adam's lease is up. So between now and then, we'll have skirmishes with him. We'll have uh, not the war. He won the war. Uh, but we're going to have to enforce the victory that the Lord Jesus Christ got for us. That's right. So right here in this same chapter, same book, it tells us. Uh, we're going to read Ephesians, the last uh, chapter, verse 16. Finally, my brethren, be strong in the Lord. That's be, be in dunamud. That's that dunamis power. 
We do have access to that. It comes on us in the Holy Ghost. But that's not what you use against the enemy. We use against the enemy the exousia, the authority. Finally, my brethren, be in dunamood in the Lord and in the power of his might. Put on the whole armor of God that you may be able to stand against the strategies of the devil. He is a strategy against you, but you can stand against it. For we wrestle not against flesh and blood, but against principalities and powers, against the rulers of the darkness of this world. Remember that Satan usurped the authority from Adam. Adam was supposed to rule this world. He was supposed to have his uh, kingdom and, the, and seats in the air. And he said, so he says here, we wrestle not against flesh and blood, but against these. And some of them are called the rulers of darkness of this world. And, the other, and others are wicked spirits in high places. So this is a, uh, a hierarchy of how they work. Uh, it says in 1 John that the whole world lies in darkness or wickedness. And so there's a hierarchy. There are demons that are higher, uh, of higher um, status. And then there are what I call low-level devils. Little devils. Uh, if you could see, if you could see, uh, they're, they're here. They're all around us. One, one time Brother Hagin uh, said, the very air about you yeah. is infested with demons. Now, isn't that something? Infested with demons? And um, I'm trying to find the way he said it in here. It's, it's a really good way. This is Macmillan. Between the visible and material sphere in which human beings dwell and that unseen and intangible spirit realm which surrounds us and impenetrates it, no veil exists save the ability of mankind to see the immaterial with eyes adapted only for the viewing. In other words, low-level devils are everywhere. But no need to worry. There's more angels, more powerful. We just can't see them. Our eyes are withholding. Good thing they are. I wouldn't want to see them. But we have weapons of our warfare against them. And he points out the appointed weapons of our warfare are the authority of the risen Lord mm -hmm. and the blood of the Lamb. We overcome him by the blood of the Lamb and the authority of the risen Lord. He writes, to the man of wholehearted consecration and of scriptural faith, these weapons will be found all sufficient at all times. Never once for him to overcome us. And look at that, what it says right here. We wrestle not against flesh and blood, but against these things. Verse 13, wherefore take unto you the whole armor of God that you may be able to withstand in the evil day and having done all to stand. Uh, now, I have a really good reference Bible, Center Reference Bible, Oxford, Cambridge Bible. And over in the Center Reference column, it gives me the Greek for what's been translated, having done all. And the Greek says, having overcome all to stand. God created you to dominate. Man lost the authority. Jesus got it back. He gave it to us. All authority is given unto me, he said, in heaven and earth. Go ye therefore. He gave us the authority over demons. We're going to see that even further in, in the beginning chapters of, of this book of Ephesians. Having overcome all to stand. Never once are you to be overcome. But you'll have to do something to make sure you're not. Stand therefore, having your loins girt about with the truth, and having on the breastplate of righteousness, your feet shod with the preparation of the gospel of peace, above all taking the shield of faith wherewith you shall be able to quench all the fiery darts of the wicked. Well, I wonder what that word all means. It's not written. You can get a few of them every now and then. No. One or two is going to get through on you. No. It says you can quench all the fiery darts of the wicked. But you'll have to move with the shield of faith. and You'll have to move with the weapons that are not carnal, but mighty through God to the pulling down of strongholds. Take the helmet of salvation and the sword of the Spirit, which is the Word of God, praying with all manner of prayer and supplication in the Spirit and watching. Remember what we said yesterday? Sister Newsom said, the price of constant victory is constant watchfulness. 
So yeah. we, we're not fearful, we're watchful. Constant watchfulness is the price of constant victory. And that's what it says right here. Praying with all prayer and supplication in the Spirit and watching thereunto with all perseverance and supplication for all saints. You, mother, you, father, you can set up a watch and watch over your family and with your shield of faith and the blood of Jesus and your knowledge. You have to have knowledge that you have authority. Uh, the enemy tries to keep people, um, he tries to keep them blind of it. Sure. That they have authority. So now how do we know uh, that we have authority? One of the best places is the book of Ephesians. So in the first chapter of the book of Ephesians, there's a prayer. This is a Holy Spirit given prayer and anointed prayer. It worked then, it works now. I learned from Kenneth E. Hagin to pray this every day of my life. And especially in the last couple of years, I don't think I've let a day go by unless I maybe had a five o'clock plane to catch. And then it took me later in the day. But I, I don't want to fail to set my watch. That's right. Now this prayer here says, verse 17, God of our Lord Jesus Christ, the Father of glory, give me something. I want something. What is it? the spirit of wisdom and revelation in the knowledge of him. Then he gives you three things that you need light on. Let the eyes of my understanding be enlightened. Enlighten me on these things that I might know, number one, what is the hope of his calling? Number two, what are the riches of the glory of his inheritance in the saints? You're God's inheritance, and there's a glory in you. Number three, and this is what we're going to talk about today. Number three, and what is the exceeding greatness of his dunamis power to usward who believe according to the working of his mighty power, which he wrought in Christ when he raised him from the dead? The greatest exertion of God's power in the Bible, even greater than creation. He did that with his finger and with his words. But the greatest demonstration of God's power was when he raised Jesus from the dead. Amen. Because it was opposed by the prince of darkness. But when he rose up from the dead, he arose head over them. Now look here what it says. He wants us to know about that power. He wants us to know what is the exceeding greatness of his power Verse 19, to usward, it's for us. To usward, who believe, according to the working of that mighty power, which he wrought in the Messiah, the anointed one, when he raised him from the dead and set him at his own right hand in the heavenlies, far above, far above all principality and power and might and dominion and every name that is named, not only in this age and world, but also in that which is to come. And he hath put all things under his feet and gave him to be head over all things to the church, which is his body. He's the head, we're the body. The fullness of him that filleth all in all. Oh, and God. you, don't stop at chapter 2. And you has he quickened, who were dead in trespasses and sins. Now we're going to skip a few verses here. Well, I think we'll read verse 2. Wherein in time past you walked according to the course of this world, according to the prince of the power or the authority of the air, the spirit that now works in the children of disobedience. He's working in all of those people that don't know him. Verse 4, you were dead like that. But God, verse 4, who is rich in mercy for his great love wherewith he loved us, even when we were dead in sins, has quickened us together with Christ by grace we're saved, has raised us up together yes, and made us sit together in the heavenly places Praise in Christ God. Jesus. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Glory be to God. When he quickened Jesus, he quickened me. That's right. When he raised him, he raised me. When he seated him at his own right hand, he seated me. Now the right hand of the Father is the center of the power of the universe. 
And that's where Jesus is set, and that's where I'm set. Because when he raised the head, he raised the body. Bless the Lord. And that is, uh, I'm going to read that to you right here. The church, they are made to sit with Christ in the heavenlies. Christ's seat is at the right hand of God. His people, therefore, occupy with him the same august position. This honor is not to a chosen few, but is the portion of all who share the resurrection of the Son of God. It is the birthright of every born-again believer. Praise God. He sat down on the right hand of the throne of the majesty in the heavens, Hebrews 8, 1. The right hand of the throne of God is the center of power of the whole universe. Praise and the Jesus. exercising of the power of the throne was committed unto the ascended Lord. The elevation of his people with him to the heavenlies has no other meaning that that, than that they are made sharers of the authority which is his. They are made to sit with him. That is, they share his throne. To share a throne means without question to partake of the authority which it represents. Indeed, they have been thus elevated in the plan of God for this very purpose that they may even now exercise to the extent of their spiritual apprehension authority over those Praise powers God. which have brought about on the earth and are still creating through their ceaseless manipulations of the minds and circumstances of mankind. So, when he raised him, he raised me. Amen. He raised all the body. Yes. That's right. And the body of Christ is far above all principality and power, might and dominion. The feet are in the body. Everything's under his feet. That's right. When we recognize this authority, that's step one, not to be ignorant of it. Many believers are ignorant of oh, it. Oh, yes. Uh -huh. They just think they've got to get through life somehow without the devil just tearing them up. But number two, it has to be exercised through faith, through your mouth. Faith is always released through your mouth. And tomorrow we're going to talk about how you can, through your mouth, from that august position, yes, take authority over Satan and Praise the kingdom God. of darkness. That's right. Glory to God. Hallelujah. Billy and I'll be right back. The world around you may be filled with scenes of destruction, trouble, and danger. But as a believer, those troubles are not supposed to be a part of your life. There is a place you can live protected from the perils you see. The Divine Protection Package is a collection of books and CDs that teaches you about your place of protection and how to live without fear. Renowned author Billy Brim has written The Blood and the Glory, an in-depth teaching on the power of Jesus' blood and the authority and privileges we have because of it. The Authority of the Believer by John A. McMillan is a book every believer should read. Christians must take their place of authority seated with Jesus at the Father's right hand. And this book teaches you how. Kenneth and Gloria Copeland teach three audio messages in the CD series, Under His Shadow. You'll learn about the secret place of God's protection that is unlike any other. You have every right to determine the conditions around you, change your scenery, and learn how to make your surroundings places of peace. You don't have to live another day in fear and doubt. To help you learn how to live in peace and safety, Kenneth Copeland Ministries has put together the Divine Protection Package. To order your package at a special 27% savings of just $28, log on to kcm.org slash TV special or call or write to us today. For an additional product discount, 48-hour processing, or other resources by Kenneth Copeland Ministries, visit our website at kcm.org. Order today. The information from the Word that Billy shared with us this week is vital mm -hmm. to your protection and to your well-being. So I want to encourage you to get this Divine Protection Package. Billy's been sharing with us the things about it. I tell you, this is, this is powerful. This it's has powerful. got a lot of information. Keep you alive. Yes, it will. And Billy and I, we don't like to talk about it sometimes, but we've been around a long time. <laughs> and we have seen, we have seen failures. Yeah. Yes. That resulted Sad, in death. But true. And we have seen victory that resulted in life. You've got to get on the Word of God and you've got to teach it to your children. So we want you to get this package under his shadow. That's uh, 
three CDs. That's Psalm 91, isn't it? Yes, on Psalm 91, the authority of the believer that we've been studying this week by Macmillan and Billy's book on the blood and the glory. And uh, this will get you started. But now this, you know, you don't ever get to quit on no, this subject. You have to always feed. stay strong in the word, strong in your faith for your protection. Pray over it. Plead the blood of Jesus over your family. Make your stand in Jesus' name based on the word of God. Learn how to do that. And you'll keep your family safe. Hallelujah. Even in dangerous times. And we've got the Branson meeting coming up. Billy's place up there. She owns Branson, you know. That's March the 8th through the 10th. I think Keith would argue about that. In Branson, that. Missouri. Well, between the two of them. <laughs> Faith Life Church is right on the Branson yeah. Strip, and that's where the meeting will be. It's one of the best meetings we have all year because it's such a fabulous church. They're so well taught, mm -hmm. and they're ready. I mean, you can give it that's to true. them, and they'll take it. Ken and I enjoy the meeting very much. We want you to come. Uh, for more information, go to kcm.org. If you can't get there any other way, watch on the Internet. And today is Kelly's birthday. Ke Kelly Copeland Swisher is one year older. Well, that's a good way to say it. Yes, today. <laughs> so happy birthday, Kelly. You're a great girl. We love you. We're proud of you. You're awesome. Besides that, you're Emily's mother. Hallelujah. Bring her to see me. Hallelujah. And we will, uh, tomorrow, wrap up our teaching on God's divine protection. This is Gloria Couple and Billy Brim reminding you, Jesus, is, Jesus Lord. is Lord. Thank you for joining us on the Believer's Voice of Victory. For this week's broadcasts on DVD or CD, today's product offer, or for more information on Kenneth Copeland Ministries, visit our website at kcm.org. He has called us to be free and be blessed and walk in the power and the outpouring of that blessing. Come to a Kenneth Copeland Ministries event. The Branson Victory Campaign, March 8th through the 10th with Kenneth and Gloria Copeland at Faith Life Church in Branson, Missouri. Living Victory West Coast Faith Encounter, Anaheim, California, April 6th and 7th with Kenneth Copeland and Dr. Stephen and Kelly Swisher. Celebrate 30 years in Europe at the Europe Victory Campaign, May 10th through 12th with Kenneth and Gloria Copeland at the Excel Center in London, UK. Living Victory Pacific Rim Faith Encounter, Honolulu, Hawaii, June 15th and 16th with Kenneth Copeland and Dr. Stephen and Kelly Swisher. The Southwest Believers Convention, July 2nd through 7th with Kenneth and Gloria Copeland and their special guests in Fort Worth, Texas. For more information on these and other events, go to events.kcm.org. Everybody, we're Kenneth and Gloria Copeland. We're inviting you to join us for a very special series of broadcasts on New Testament partnership in the anointing of God. Please don't miss this. It is vital to our very well-being in the times we're living in. Amen. You won't want to miss these special broadcasts.